All right, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we're going to look at uh, 3.14. This is the Earth's inner layers. Um, let's get started. Uh, if you could cut the Earth open, okay, so there's a nice little graphic here. But if you could cut the, the Earth open, you're going to see the following layers. And this is, goes from inside to out. So you're going to have in the very center of the Earth, the inner core. And then you have uh, the outer core the mantle and finally the crust okay um so let's highlight that here now here's the layers by composition so as we go through this um initially okay the top part here um so here they go these the core of the mantle crust are divisions based on composition like what they're composed of so the crust you can see it's very small it's up here very thin layer very thin layer uh, the crust is less than one percent of the earth by mass and then there's two types of crust um, continental crust which is the land portion above the oceans and then the oceanic crust so below the oceans there's um, there's a crust there's a layer of crust uh, oh I don't want to do that here go like that below the crust Below the crust uh, is the mantle. Okay, so number one is the crust. Uh, layer two is the mantle. And the mantle, um, it's going to be very extremely hot. It's very dense. Um, and it represents the largest portion of, uh, of the earth. Okay. Uh, now, below the crust, you've got the core. And you actually have uh, two layers of the core. You have the outer core and inner core. So the core is mostly made of iron metal. We learned that last time. That's what we, we know that because of the magnetic field of the earth. Um, and we also know that by seismic waves, right? Waves are created during earthquakes. And the core is mostly iron. And then it's 31% of the earth. I'm not going to care about the percentages, guys, just so you know. Um, so we'll do that. And then, like I said, the, the, the Earth's metallic core is actually made of two layers, the inner core and uh, the, the outer core. Okay, I'm going to have put on this video. I want you to watch it, and then we'll uh, resume here. Let's go to YouTube. Homeowners are raving about Leaf Filter, the proven solution that ends gutter A. Hey. I'm just making a planet. Well, this is how planets like Earth get their structure anyway, because of different layers of density. Even today, with all of our modern technology, we've only been able to drill about a third of the way through Earth's crust. So how do we really know if it's solid, liquid, hollow? Luckily, Earth has this tendency to violently shake and occasionally burp up some of its insides. And that's taught us a lot about our planet's guts without having to go down there. We're used to seeing density at work. That's the same reason that the atmosphere, the least dense part of our planet, is on the outside. And the crust, the second least dense part of the Earth, is beneath our feet. Because I'm less dense than the dirt, I don't sink into the ground. And even though there's about one ton of atmosphere above my head, it's not dense enough to send me floating. The main layers of the Earth are organized in the same way. Depending on whether they're divided up by how they squish around or what they're made of, geologists give different names to the different layers of the Earth. So that's how it is now. But to really understand why the Earth is organized the way it is, we need to go back to before our planet even existed. In the very young universe, hydrogen and helium were pretty much the only elements around. They condensed into stars, began the process of nuclear fusion, and eventually died. Spitting heavier elements from carbon and oxygen to things like nickel and gold back out into the universe. One of those heavy elements, iron, is the most stable element produced outside of a supernova. And the early universe produced a lot of iron. That'll be important in a second. Fresh hydrogen and helium went on to form new stars like our sun, and the heavier elements collided to form the dust and debris that would become our solar system's plants, and moons, and asteroids, and everything else. High temperatures in the early inner solar system meant that light volatile elements could only condense further out. 
which is why the four inner planets of our solar system are dense and rocky, while outer gas giants like Saturn could hypothetically float in a really, really, really big swimming pool. After proto-Earth grew larger, radioactivity, gravity, and violent boom-booms melted that messy mixture of rocks and minerals, and this is where things started to get organized. Just like that tower of density, the heaviest materials like iron and nickel worked their way to the core. The lighter materials like aluminum and silicon stayed near the surface. The inner core experiences pressures more than three million times what we do on Earth's surface, which means that despite being as hot as the surface of the sun, the iron in our planet's inner sphere is likely solid and not liquid. The outer core is most likely liquid because it's hot, but not under as much pressure as the inner core. We know that's the case because of earthquakes up here on the surface. As certain kinds of seismic waves travel through the Earth, the liquid outer core either refracts them or blocks them altogether. And that creates seismic shadows on the opposite side of the planet. If you want to use pressure to melt metal at home, just stack up 16 million pennies. The one on the bottom should liquefy in no time. Mercury is so close to the sun that its atmosphere has long since blown away. But luckily for you and me, our liquid metal outer core lets us have an atmosphere. Deep metallic convection currents create a magnetic field that shields Earth from the solar wind. Otherwise, we'd be pounded with deadly radiation. Our atmosphere would be blown away. And Earth really wouldn't be a very lifey place. Over time, Earth continues to cool, so more and more of its liquid outer core is turning solid, and we're shrinking little by little. Every earthquake that we feel is Earth taking one step closer to cooling off and becoming a real third rock from the sun. So there you have it. Like Carl Sagan said, we are star stuff who has taken its density into its own hands. It's density, right? I'm your density. Stay curious. People have been looking at clouds since people have been people. Those billowing shapes might have been our first art or the characters in our first stories. All right, that's a pretty good video going through the, the different uh, layers of the earth. Uh, then they also talk about mechanical properties. And, and with this, we're going to talk about... Um, Mainly, it's going to be the, the mantle and the crust. And remember, the, the crust is on the outside, and then below that is the mantle. Uh, and they break these into two different divisions. Um, so sometimes I'll kind of hopefully not confuse you with this, but it's, it's the lithosphere. Actually, no, let's do this. It's the lithosphere and the atmosphere, or the, sorry, the asthenosphere, my bad. When you hear litho, you should be thinking uh, solid rock. And that's what it is. The lithosphere is composed of the crust and the uppermost layer of the mantle. And it's going to be very rigid and brittle and it's solid. And since it's solid and it, it kind of shifts underneath it, um, it's broken. It's cracked into pieces. And almost like if you have a hard-boiled egg and it's been hit a few times or dropped a few times, there's, there's cracks that appear. And that's basically what the Earth's crust looks like. Okay, then... Uh, below the lithosphere, below that that uh, solid part, you have the asthenosphere, which is the upper mantle. Um, and this layer, it, it's solid, but it's it's almost like a, a plastic that's been sort of uh, almost like an oobleck. How about that? Like oobleck um, or very uh, like a, a melted, uh, very thick uh, plastic, okay, or how about like a real thick molasses or corn syrup? It flows, but very, very slow, okay? Um, and they said, that, oh, solid, it flows like silly putty. Yeah, okay, that would make sense. Um, so, uh, in, in summary, this is pretty straightforward. We know that the earth is divided into these three primary uh, layers, the core, the mantle, and the crust. When you look at the mechanical properties, uh, they break down the crust and the mantle are divided into lithosphere and asthenosphere. Lithosphere being the solid portion, asthenosphere sort of being a semi-solid. It, it, it slowly flows. Um, and, okay, let's watch this video here.
Uh, hi, Dr. D. Hi, guys. What's up? We felt our tree hot shake this morning. We wanted to know what happened. Yeah, I felt something, too. We think that it might have been an earthquake, but we can't prove it yet. Have you ever been in an earthquake? Yes, I have. But it didn't feel the same as what I felt this morning. See, I told you it wasn't an earthquake. Wait a minute. All earthquakes don't feel the same. To begin understanding earthquakes, you have to know something about the structure of the Earth. That makes sense. What can you tell us? Come on, let me show you. Okay. Let me cut this peach in half. Okay, be careful. I will, thanks. This will be our Earth, only it's a lot smaller. And it's called a scale model. The pit is like the core of the Earth. The Earth's core is about half of its diameter. What's it made of? We've never been there, but we think it's made of iron and nickel. The inner part of the core is solid, and the outer part is liquid. It is so dense, if we had a gallon jug full of the Earth's core material, it would weigh over 100 pounds. Wait, Dr. D, you lost me. How do we know how big the core is and what it's made of if we've never been there? Well, it's just a guess. You're kidding. Well, actually, it's a pretty good guess based upon a lot of evidence. One of the biggest clues we have to the structure of the Earth comes from our study of earthquakes. So we're using earthquakes to help us understand earthquakes? That's right. The part of the peach that you eat is called the Earth's mantle. It's not as dense as the core, but it's more dense than what's on the outside. What's the outside? It's called the crust. Just like the crust of a bread. Very good. At the skin of a peach, the Earth's crust is very thin. The crust under the oceans is typically between 5 and 10 kilometers thick. It's made of a dark, dense rock called basalt. Continental crust is between 30 and 70 kilometers thick. It's made of a lighter, less dense rock like this granite. Is there a reason why the Earth is layered like this? Because of density. Watch this experiment over here. I'm going to put this green tinted water and this salad oil into this graduated cylinder and shake them up. Let's see what happens. The salad oil is on top, and then the water. Let's put in some motor oil. It turns out the least dense, which is motor oil, floats on the top, and the most dense water sinks to the bottom. It's just like the early history of the Earth, when it was all liquid. Earth? Liquid? Strange, but what does this have to do with earthquakes? When the Earth cooled, the crust upper mantle became rigid and brittle. Mm. It broke into about 12 segments, which we call plates, kind of like this cracked boiled egg. These plates float on the more dense but flexible mantle below, kind of like this egg white. These plates are in continual movement. Wow, this is too weird. Why don't we feel them moving? Move about as fast as your fingernails grow, which is only a few centimeters per year. But we have fossil evidence of this movement, which we call plate tectonics. Are fossils also clues to understanding earthquakes? Well, yes. But Dr. D, aren't there other things that could cause vibrations? Well, yes, that's a good question. Anything that makes a very loud sound make things shake a little. I watched fireworks in the fort, and some were so vague, I did feel the vibration. Oh, no, I'm late for an appointment. Why don't you take a while and discuss this? Okay, um, yeah, it was kind of, a, you can tell that was made uh, quite a while ago. It looks like it was sometime in the 90s. Uh, I like the, the styles of clothes and uh, the, the groovy music. So hope you enjoyed that. There's some pretty good information, though, with that. All right, guys, so I'm now going to post on the CK12 this assignment. Uh, you can mark this video done, and then uh, let's get going on the assignment. All right, any questions, I'm, I'm available. Thanks. Bye.